In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, we look at Psalm 121. There are a lot of places, especially in the Psalms, where God makes promises to us. Promises of safety and protection and deliverance. And we've talked about this before. We have to know how to understand those right. If we don't understand them right, if we get it wrong, we'll turn. We'll have God promising something he never promised. And Satan's good with that. He loves that. Because then when it doesn't happen the way we hoped, we blame God. God, you promised you'd protect me and you didn't protect me. So we need to know what God's really promising what he's not promising. Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Well, let's go and take it a little slower. The first verse, I lift up my eyes to the hills. What does that mean? Down south, you get to the Ozarks and lots of hills around here. Not so many. There's nothing to do with that. When they say that the hills, they're talking about the hills there in Palestine. And the important thing about the hills was that's where they had sacred trees or shrines to pagan gods. And so when they say, I lift up my eyes to the hills, they're saying, I look up and I see all the false gods that other people put their trust in. But where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. That's the thing. I don't look to all those false gods. I look to the Lord for my help. What false gods do we have? Well, it's not sacred trees and shrines to pagan idols, but we're surrounded by false gods. We have false gods of money. Money's going to solve our problems. Science, medicine, that's going to solve my problems. The government, the government's going to solve my problems. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, these are all false gods. We cannot trust them for every good. That's not where it comes from. And then they will let us down. Guaranteed. Even if it's a dear family member that we have counted on. They're only human. They're sinful. They will let us down. God has never promised any of them that we should look to them for every good. He says we should look to him. And the protection he gives us is not really about physical life stuff. It's about spiritual protection. When it says he'll deliver us, it's from sin, death, and the devil. Not from car accidents, getting shot, COVID-19, anything like that. All of those things can and will happen to Christians. This doesn't mean that God has broken his promise. He never promised to spare us that. In fact, he says, in the world you will have problems. You will have tribulation. But he says, I have overcome the world. That does not mean that these things won't happen to us. That means he will deliver us. That means in him, in him we have the sure deliverance of salvation, forgiveness of sins, eternal life. That all of these troubles are preparing us, Paul says, for an eternal weight of glory. And that when we're there, when we have that, when we're delivered from this body of death and we live in the resurrection, then all of these troubles we have now won't even be worth comparing with the joy that waits for us. And how is all of that ours? We get a clue from the last verse. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And the church has taught us how to understand this by using that in the rite of baptism. That's a blessing given to the child of God just as they've been baptized. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. 
In baptism, God adopts us as his own. He gives us the new birth as his child. He bestows on us his Holy Spirit, the one who works faith in us, the one who preserves faith in us, the one who points us to Christ, draws us to Christ, brings us together in the church, and there in the church through the word and the sacraments, baptism, Lord's Supper, we are given more Holy Spirit. We're given to the point, Jesus. In baptism, we are buried with Jesus by baptism into his death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too live in life. Baptism is all about Easter. Baptism is all about Jesus' resurrection being for me, for us. And all of God's promises now find their yes and amen for you in those waters. God will keep these promises. That is why we look to him. There are false gods all around us. Now don't get me wrong. Sometimes the way God gives us help and protection is through those physical things, because he does care about the physical stuff. No government, no money, no medicine, no none of that is ever going to save your eternal life. It's not going to give you forgiveness of sins. It's not going to give you heaven. But in this life, we will have some protection. Things will not be for us as bad as they could be because God uses those things. Doctors, governments, money, all of those tools that he uses. But we have to keep clear that they are gifts from him, tools he uses. They are not our God. We look past those things to the one who gives them to us. God himself, he alone is the one we look to for every good. We can look at, lift up our eyes, look at all the false gods around us, look at all those things that in and of themselves may be good, but not if they become a god to us. And we say, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Be of good courage. We all will endure trials in this life. We all will endure hardships, and unless our Lord returns first, for whatever reason, whatever the cause on that death certificate, we will all die. But in Christ, we will all be made alive, because we've already been buried with him into death by baptism, in order that we may rise to new life in him. And so he gives us the blessing. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen.